look, we all gotta start somewhere. And the way things currently are, most people looking to get lean end up being paralyzed with all the information about calories, macros, fasting, body fat percentages, keto, cardio, high intensity intervals, different weight training programs. And this paralysis actually ends up being one of the main reasons why most people never reach their fitness goals. And this is why in this video, I wanna share with you a couple of really critical things you need to know as you're getting into this journey that no one else talks about. I've been a fitness coach for eight years now, I work with more than 600 clients, and this is not just theory. I'm gonna share with you what actually works in the real world and what you need to know. Because what I've noticed is also that a lot of us have a similar goal in mind. We want to get the fitness side of our lives handled, we wanna create a healthy life balance, and ultimately live a healthy, sustainable lifestyle long-term. Which brings me to the first thing you need to know. Most people getting into this set the wrong goal body weight. I hear this all the time, but Mario, I'm five foot eight, 145 pounds, feels like a really low body weight for me, which is 65 kilos around 172 centimeters. Or someone who's five foot 10 will say that they haven't been 160 pounds since they were in college and they're gonna look really, really skinny when they get there, which is around 72 and a half kilos around 178 centimeters height. And look, I gotta be straightforward with you here. Most of your expectations about your ideal target body weight are false. A part of that is because of Hollywood and magazines throwing out different numbers, but then there's also social media where you have fake natural athletes sharing their stats and they're big and lean and ripped all year round, but obviously failing to disclose that they're using a lot of performance enhancing substances on the side. And then there's also this thing where in our society today, being overweight is the new normal. That's the majority. So we've lost the references for a lean weight for a specific body weight. For example, I personally walk around between 165 and 172 pounds, which is around 75 to 77 kilos. And I'm five foot 10, which is 178 centimeters. And most people, when they see me, they think I weigh much more than I actually do. And this is with 10 years of dedicated weight training, really working on this area of my life and being very, very consistent throughout this entire period of time. And the reality is if you're someone who hasn't spent years seriously weight training to build a solid base of muscle, and if you're looking to get lean down to 10 or 12 or 15% body fat for the first time, you will likely have to cut to a much lower body weight than you initially expect and you looking to resist this fact and not embrace it will make things mentally a lot harder because most people seriously underestimate how much body fat they really have to lose to get to those lean levels. Part of the problem is that most people use either smart scales or online calculators to estimate their body fat percentage. And both of these can be very, very generous. I've had clients come to me that said that they were at 15% body fat and when I saw their photos afterwards, they were above 20% body fat. So if you take someone who is at 200 pounds looking to get lean and they mentally only think about getting down to 180 pounds and they eventually get there and now they're very disappointed because they in their minds had only 20 pounds to lose. Now they're doubting and they're not sure what to do next. Should they continue cutting? Should they not continue cutting? Did they do something wrong? Did they lose a whole bunch of muscle. They don't understand what's going on. So if you're someone who's looking to get lean, there are two main things that I would like like you to do. First, be very honest about your starting point and get a proper estimation of your body fat percentage. Then you can do this in two very, very simple ways. First, you can do a DEXA scan, which I would consider a gold standard assessment to see where you're roughly at when it comes to your body fat percentage. And I've actually met a lot of people over the years that were pretty shocked when they got their first report from a DEXA scan and just realizing how much body fat they really have. And the second way would be to then take photos of yourself and compare them to people that have done DEXA scans or other different methods to estimate their body fat percentage and then compare to get a rough estimate of where you're at. And I'm gonna leave a couple examples here where you can compare yourself with to see where your starting point is. Now, if you're someone who doesn't have a lot of weight training experience and if you're in between different percentages, I would definitely recommend putting yourself in that higher percentage because if you've gained weight over the years and you weren't weight training to build muscle, you've then just put on a bunch of body fat. Now, if as you're losing weight, you actually get to a target body weight and that was your initial goal, but you still have a lot of body fat to lose, you want to make sure you keep going. And then when you hit below 15% body fat, if your body weight is low, now you can focus on building more muscle and embracing a lean bulk, which will naturally add more weight and you no longer will have to deal with that issue. 
On this journey, it is very, very important to have the right expectations and also to have goals that go beyond that initial weight loss. This then keeps you focused on the long game, which actually brings me to the next point, which is that on this journey, it is inevitable that you will screw up. It is not a matter of if, it is a matter of when. There is no straight path to success here. A lot of these screw-ups will be caused by life events that are completely outside of your control. And when you do lose momentum, it is not gonna feel good and your mind will start playing tricks on you. Even basic habits such as tracking your food with my fitness pal or weighing yourself daily will feel 10 times harder. And they don't actually change in difficulty. It is your perception. Your emotional state has temporarily changed, now making it all seem much more difficult than it actually is. And most people, unfortunately, don't realize this and it can take them months until they can get themselves back on track. And if you're someone who has been struggling, when you lose that momentum, you can't regain it as easily, there are three things that you need to do. First, prepare yourself mentally for that inevitable moment when you do lose momentum and don't let it catch you off guard. Number two, make sure to hit that like button below the video because that's gonna definitely help you get back on track. Number three, when you do end up losing that momentum, when you do fall off track, remember that it takes takes way more energy to start a routine than it does to keep a routine going. So it will get a lot easier if you simply get started back on those habits that you wanna have in your life. And this will help you not let that one bad day turn into a bad week and then turn into a major setback. And remember in the grand scheme of things, you don't have to be perfect to get great results. A couple of little slip ups here or there, if they're minor, if they're not happening all the time and if they don't turn into a disaster, will not be enough to hold you back. Remember, if you have a calorie deficit of, let's say, 3,500 calories per week, and you've just ate an extra 1,500 calories, it was an honest mistake. Well, you still have 2,000 calories of a deficit left, which is allowing you now to lose more than half a pound, more than a quarter of a kilo, even with that mistake that you just made. And so you don't wanna let that little slip up now get to you, get in your head, and turn into a major setback where you're off for a whole month. And remember, nobody's perfect, not where right you, you wanna keep learning from mistakes so you can do better next time, but overall, you just wanna make sure you keep going, stay consistent, and keep improving yourself over time. Now, you know how you hear people say that having a great physique is 90% diet, so if you just handle the diet side of things, everything else falls in place? Well, that's not necessarily true. And yeah, sure, for getting lean, diet and nutrition is definitely 80, 90% of it, but if you're looking to have a great fit physique, well, dieting is just revealing the gains that you have. And if you don't have much muscle built up, you're just gonna look like you've undergone a starvation experiment. And for most people, they don't have that much muscle built up and they're just starting to learn about these things. Then they hear 90% is dieting, sure, then I don't have to do as much weight training. I can just dabble around or wing it or even start lifting a little bit later because I wanna lose weight first. This thought will seriously hold you back on your journey. So if you're currently looking at this and you're skinny fat or someone who has a lot of weight to lose and you don't have actually much muscle built up or you haven't trained in recent history where you've been very, very consistent with it, you must take care of this right now. Set time aside for three to four sessions per week which are optimized for building muscle. And this isn't high intensity interval training, circuit training, doing a bunch of jumping jacks. I really mean sessions that are optimized for building muscle, resting enough between sets, focusing on compound lifts, making sure your form is dialed in, making sure that you're progressively getting stronger, that you're training each body part two, three times per week, and that you're training consistently. Make this your number one focus when it comes to training and you're gonna be much happier with the overall results. And let's not forget that this is a journey after all. Even if I could snap my fingers and you have six pack abs right now, you would regain the body fat very quickly and be back to where you are today because it's about the skills and the habits that you gain through the process of reaching your goal. And the same thing applies to other areas of life. I've heard one said that if you were to take all the money in the world and you equally divide it among everybody, it would soon find its way back to the same pockets. Most people don't realize that managing your finances is a set of skills and the same thing applies to fitness. The most important question to ask yourself isn't what am I getting out of this or how long it's gonna take me to reach my goal, but it is who am I becoming? Who are you becoming? 
as a result of this journey because this is a journey of personal development and it's about becoming the type of person that can sustain that healthy routine where you have that lean, fit, healthy, strong body and that takes practice and that takes patience and time. There is no quick fix. There is no straight line to success. It's not easy, but it is definitely worth it. I was gonna help you on this journey is making sure to hit that subscribe button below and the notifications by hitting the bell icon. Details for coaching are in the description below. Check those out as well. I'm going to leave a video here then that's really important for you in your fitness journey. So check out that video and I'm going to see you right there.